Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slam of Wrestling. Myself, Supreet, and this is your AEW Dynamite review for January 19th, 2022. And I'm joined by Ridwan here. So, Ridwan, what did you think about this week's Dynamite, man? I thought it was a little better than last week's. And that's a very huge compliment at this point. Yeah, I thought it was significantly better than what it was last week. I mean, last week wasn't entirely bad as we discussed. It was just like very eh. And given the precedent and standard that uh, Dynamite has set up over the years, you know, you expect so much more. But you also expect these occasional dip shows like you keep mentioning that, you know, Tony Khan tries to, you know, <laughs> reduce the excitement for a show of Dynamite so that he could build up to something a week later or the week after that. So this was one of those examples where last week's was like uh, passable, but this week's show was like really good, except like a few minor complaints, which of course, like, you know, we as reviewers do, like we always find something to moan about in uh, while reviewing wrestling, but uh, it's fine. It's passable and... Uh, yeah, overall, I thought yesterday was a great show. And what do you think about the crowd we had in Washington? It was a very, in like you could say, a mix of a hot crowd and a pretty dead crowd. Yeah, I mean, that also depended on what they wanted to see and what they didn't. Like, and it, it's like, uh, it was like a smaller arena, but I don't think it was the same one where they had the first ever Dynamite or... No, I, I don't think so, because this one was pretty small compared to the uh, the previous one, which was like a big, huge, uh, huge arena. I thought that was the Capital One Arena, and this is like the Entertainment and Sports Center or something. This was very, yeah. this was a smaller one. Yeah, that, that, that's, that was my point. This is where, this was a very small arena, kind of like they did with in the Florida market, you know, that uh, arena in Orlando or something like that. Yes, uh, the one in uh, Miami where they had uh, Road Rager. Because that yeah, that's the... Yeah, yeah. That was the exact arena I was comparing to. Hmm. Like, even, uh, you know, the connected entrance ramp to the ring, which is somehow one of my biggest pet peeves. It's like, I don't like seeing that because I'm more used to, you know, the the ramp being on the floor and then the wrestlers entering. This is like, you know, the ramp and the ring apron connecting. This reminds me of TNA 2010, how they used to, how they used to set it up. But, uh, I mean, it's a wrestling show at the end of the day. What else would you want to complain about? But, um, we'll get, talk about the entirety of this uh, card but before that if you are new to slam up wrestling then make sure to like share subscribe do all that fun stuff uh, check out our other content links provided in the description below but uh, let's start with uh, the return of one john moxley he's back after three months so really great to see him back on tv and uh, he had something to say it was a very genuine promo not a pro wrestling promo. It was a very genuine promo. He was talking about the things he had to go through. And uh, what this started off in a very shitty way. Like yeah. there was some heckler in the crowd. And this was very audible. We just mentioned this was a very small arena. This was very audible. And John Moxley being John Moxley said, shut the fuck up. Go fuck yourself. Get this guy out of the arena. People fought for that. He also said piece of shit. So, and great thing is they didn't uh, bleep it out on TBS. Yeah, I was surprised they didn't do that because you know usually if you do, you're getting fined or something. But if they could excuse for a while, then you know so be it. And the other thing uh, we saw is like I just mentioned, he was talking about. Uh, the dark cloud, this is the exact term he used, the dark cloud that has been, you know, uh, looming around him for like he saw this coming and he wanted to kick the shit out of it and he was able to, you know, get through and you could say come back, you know, he's now clean, he's looking leaner and main thing is he's healthy. Yes, that's all we need. 
man i am like super duper excited to see him back he's of course he's my favorite wrestler in aw and down like you know i would rank him as a top there are others as well but you know which we'll get to later sometime but uh, fuck man he looks incredibly different from you know where he left off because if you remember you i think we had discussed this once on on uh, like you know while we were reviewing reviewing the older episodes was when uh, like you could see a noticeable difference from moxley from what he was like even a few months prior when he before he left for his paternal leave right and he came back and like there was something different about him and it wasn't even his hair like you know he was just fully bald or like you know he had like a crew cut or something there was something noticeably different like his chest had been puffed out and he had a beer belly as well which you know we only later on got to know that he was battling alcohol addiction and if you like compare that where he left off to where he is now and like you know he's he looks like the old john moxley when he debuted in aw or when he was world champion so man kudos to him i couldn't be any more happier for him and i hope he's living he's living a better and healthy life as years go on but you know as someone who's like a big fan of him man this is this is just truly incredible to see and this promo that he cut was also very raw like you know it was from the heart he, did, he didn't even have to he didn't have to polish it just for the sake of tv but whatever he said he meant by it and that's what is mark of a true professional one and also as someone who's you know battled his demons and he kicked you know quote he kicked the shit out of them that's all that's all we want to hear and that's all we want to see how great john moxley is and he is hoping to bigger and better things for him and can't wait to see him in the ring and you know whatever he does on tv and basically said he's back and he did gave a warning to the entire roster of AEW and there you go man john mox is back and uh, he lit- he has you know brought on some excitement back to AEW TV again oh uh, absolutely like you know i was notice like yeah AEW shows like since he had been gone were great of course but there was like a certain like you know we used to complain we not complain we used to just notice like there was a certain spark when i say i think john moxley is someone who would bring that spark and uh, like the shows were great okay like all shows were amazing it's just that i don't know i had like a personal bias for john moxley maybe or like you know he brings that certain energy that was like slightly lacking maybe he'll fill in that gap or what but man i'm just i'm incredibly excited to see him back trust me just and i'm super uh, high you didn't dis- uh, discuss the fact that why is he back now hmm because we all, we had another advertisement regarding john moxie that he will be defending the gcb gcw world championship against homicide at their a big hammerstein show i think it's this yeah, weekend right it's tomorrow yeah so i think aw because he's an aw guy wanted that first big return on their tv because he is contracted to aw so kind of makes sense right yeah it does <laughs> but it was weird that uh, gcw announced it before and even though like he's a world champion or something but it it was weird that they got announced first and then aw announced it you know by a, by and large which was like great as well but uh, everyone was expecting it for expecting for it to be a surprise which i was like too and you know like whatever it may be i'm just happy to see moxley back and that's that's all i wanted to see and uh, on that note do you think uh, they will quickly you know start uh, re- uh, restarting i should say the program the eventual program we were about to see between moxley and brian danielson they could do that but with you know what the original plan was it may be roles reversed because you know brian was 
heelish, but he was someone like you know, he was basically a proxy for proxy for Moxley. Nice, but now with you know Moxley having all this goodwill behind him, it won't make sense at all to turn him heel unless he is someone who's pushing for it. And uh, you know, it's like it's weird because you know, with even with Eddie, like sometimes like ever since he's turned face he's been like you know a voice of reason for everyone and you were someone who could get behind him easily despite his you know past struggles even as a heel you could you would always do that knowing knowing his story but with moxley i don't think they're gonna go heel you know it's better always to read the room with with his case especially you know someone who's who's battled through hell in the past few months and you know come back stronger but Danielson would be a bit too soon for me. Like, if they are like good doing the who's the better wrestler angle, if like you know, face versus face, it works that way. But I don't think they're going to go with the old original heel route that you know, Mox was supposed to embrace and uh, Mox was supposed to win versus like the what the rumored slash original plan was that they were building towards with. Mox, you know, beating the, the the Dark Order members in each of their hometowns and then going this, which, you know, Brian took the place of and did exceptionally well. But, you know, it would have, of course, it would have been different with the Moxley. But now, I don't think they're going to turn him heel. Just a personal opinion. What, a, what about a roles reversed? Yeah, you, they could do that, but I am not sure of it either. I had mentioned this earlier, you know, when I started talking about it, that they could do that, but I don't think they're going to do it this this soon either. So we'll have to wait and see. As of now, he's back and uh, he has uh, stated that he's thirsty and he wants to drink blood. Classic mocks. But uh, as we as we move on, uh, we hear from MJF. He was with Wardlow. He talks about what happened last week, where Punk barely, you know, made it through Wardlow and got a fluke victory. And for a second, he was disappointed at Wardlow, but he quickly, you know, changed his feelings. First off, he wished happy birthday, and oh, nice. uh, said, oh, nice of him. "Yeah." And uh, he also given him certain punishment, like for the loss last week, he won't be paying him for a while. And the only way, uh, can you correct me on that now? Yeah. Uh, like he was docking his pay, like re- reducing his pay because he put his hands on MJF, like, you know, just catching. Him. Ah, And then he was like, uh, the only way you can make it through is uh, if qualifying for his face of the revolution ladder matches and uh, once MJF wins the title then only Wardlow will get his full payback so it's happening sooner or later so you mean to tell me MJF still wants the TNT title that's what he said (laughs) okay so kind of makes sense so he also hyped up the match between CM Punk and uh, Sean Spears. Uh, we'll talk we'll talk about it later on. But uh, as we move on, we had a mix tag with Adam Cole, baby, and Doctor Britt Baker, DMD. So they were facing uh, Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander. I thought this mix tag was okay. It was uh, they had. Little wrestling, a bit uh, a mix of sports entertainment and a bit mm-hmm. of comedy as well that we usually see in a Cassidy match. I thought it was okay, nothing much. Yeah, I thought I thought it was a good match. Like the chemistry these four guys had was great. There were some parts which took me off. There were some part some some spots that were overdone, but overall I thought it was a fun match. So we also had the ladies interacting with the men. Like uh, there was this one spot initially, like Britt Baker and Orange Cassidy came face to face. Cassidy with the shin kicks, uh, brutal shin kicks to the doctor. Kicks so of as yeah, and uh, like I just mentioned, the usual uh, comedy stuff with Cassidy, and there was one spot at the end where this was at the final moments. Chris Statlander was going for the area four fifty one. 
the 450 but adam cole you know basically came for this save as he was just shielding uh baker here so statlander said fuck it hit the area 451 on both cole and baker sick name so, by yeah it is it is a very innovative name so at the end the heels uh were in control as baker hit a canadian destroyer on statlander and there was one point where Adam Cole was considering to hit a Panama Sunrise on Statlander on the apron, but uh, that failed. So I don't know what happened in the final parts. There was a lot to unpack. Actually, with Adam Cole going for a Canadian uh, Panama Sunrise on to Statlander, it was a distraction where Baker, you know, super kicks Statlander and then hits a Canadian destroyer on her own. What Adam Cole did was he was going for the Canadian. He, he did hit the Canadian destroyer which Orange Cassidy kicked out of. And then after that, both Cole and Baker go get out of the ring, you know, the, the ring table, the ringside table that, uh, that is used by the timekeepers and all. So they use that table, they put it down on, they put it near the ringside and uh, like they were trying to bait Orange Cassidy into falling onto the table. But it backfired as, you know, Baker was trying to hold him and then Cole ducks Orange Cassidy, who's going for an orange punch. Then he hits Baker, like, inadvertently hits Baker, who was, like, standing inside and she falls on the table. That table fall that she took was a bit nasty. I thought, I hope she's okay. Even though if she was selling it, then great job. Then Adam Cole gets enraged. You know, the referees are checking on Britt Baker and then Adam Cole hits, of course, he hits the low blow. He's going full Toro Yano in this feud, man, with the whole low blows and shit. And then... Uh, do you think so? A little bit, yeah. He, the low blows are like coming in at a, at a very excessive rate. Even my brother is like, yeah, he's he always gets low blowed in each and every week. So it's, it's become a very thing to expect now. So Adam Cole like low blows Orange Cassidy and hits the boom for the victory. So that and then he checks on Baker and then they transition to a backstage backstage promo. So that that was your lot for this match. But let's continue on with this whole Cassidy and Cole thing. So even Cole is furious over Cassidy laying his hands on his girlfriend with Baker. So I think you even mentioned that he has beaten Cassidy in every style of match, a singles match, a tag match, multi-man match, even a mixed tag match here. So they are uh, they have booked a lights out match between Adam Cole and Orange Cassidy for next week's beach break. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man. So this should be the final blow of match, right? Like Not- I think this feud has you know gone past its, you know, run time. Yeah, probably they should have ended when, you know, they had the trios match. But again, I wasn't complaining because I was enjoying this feud. Even though, like, people are thinking that this is very, um, you know, it's degrading Adam Cole, which I don't think is the case. It's really making him stronger and helping him start pad victories, you know, on his way to, because he has... He hasn't been shy of uh, wanting to pursue the world championship. Okay. But uh, I think this victory really helped him start pad that. And next week, you know, it's a lights out match. And I, this is not going to count on his win, re- win loss record. So it only makes sense if Orange Cassidy wins that. And then Adam Cole goes, they both of them go their separate ways. And I'm expecting a certain you know, a certain thing to happen out of this Best Friends feud next week, though, in in a Lights Out match. Can you elaborate, please? Okay, so, well, this show is happening in Cleveland. And uh, Chuck Taylor has a very famous former tag team partner who is from Cleveland. So, Uh uh-oh. Friends in same tights. Could it be? Could it be? Um, well, I, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. I shouldn't be expecting this much. But if it happens, great. If it doesn't, then, you know, let it be. Let's just carry on with our lives. Are you talking about uh, Johnny wrestling? Yep. So, Johnny Gargano in AEW? Could happen. He's teased it on his Twitch stream, though, the cheeky tease. He's like, he's uh, he's 
uh, he dreams slash hopes to wrestle Kenny Omega in the next few months. And uh, he's been open about wanting to wrestle Brand Danielson as well. So it could happen. But if, you know, it's Cleveland and if this is the way they want to do, I mean, if they want to debut in some, some capacity based on what, you know, the thing is, I mean, based on what uh, the stories are heading, then I think this is the best, the only good way to do it out of all the scenarios that are possible. Hey, Johnny Gargano debut in ADU, that's good and all, but uh, I want uh, some story progression with this Adam Cole, Elite, Super Clay, Red Dragon thing. Yes, and I hope, like, it's, like I said, it's lights out, so it better be better be orange cassidy winning and uh because it's it's fine if adam cole can take a loss here even though it's like you know it's not it's not going to count on his record we'll have to wait and see how that story goes but uh a little backstage interview here where we had chris jericho with proud and powerful sent in an ot's so next week we are getting uh, a trios match so this is Jericho and Problem Powerful. They are facing 2.0 and Daniel Garcia uh, at uh, next week's you know beach break edition. So as this interview is going on, Santana and Ortiz jumped in and they pointed out something that Eddie Kingston you know mentioned of you know Jericho is the reason they are not tag team champions yet. And Santana and Ortiz agree with Kingston on that note. And so we had a kind of a, you know, verbal thing with uh, these three involved as, you know, the tag team here, walk out and Jericho's left. So I think I'm ready, man. I think this is the time you separate Santana and Otis from the inner circle. Yes, please. <laughs> like, it's a shame, you know, even Eddie Kingston is injured now, which is a shame, but uh, is it a legit injury? I don't know. Yeah, it was... is. Uh, Tony Khan mentioned it on, uh, I think, on one of his uh, appearances that he does midweek. That's sad. Unless you're Job Nation TV and you want them to open a quote unquote performance center. Because fuck that guy. Um, what I was saying is. Yes, it it's uh, it's only a matter of time before it happens, and uh, you know if they if that was always the plan because I think it happened by accident. If that was always the plan, then good on them to you know finding a way and make Santana and Otis relevant because it only makes sense for them to split. I don't think they are going to achieve anything. They could do certain things like being a part of inner circle and then you know achieve doing their own shit and you know becoming tag champions like how Sammy was. But, you know, if, if this is like heavy involvement of Jericho and if that fucker is taking all the credits, then might as well just put him on the sidelines. And Ed, Santana and Ortiz with Eddie, you know, despite the funny history that they have, always, it made so much sense than uh, Santana and Ortiz with Chris Jericho. We'll have to wait and see. And uh, yeah, we have to wait on, you know, when this Kingston Jericho program will heat up. Will heat up, get it? Yeah, I'll get to that point. But let's talk about Sean Spears versus CM Punk. And uh, uh, side note here, Sean Spears is criminally underrated. You did you check out that promo he cut on Rampage? Yes, man. It's you know even they, even with a few video editing on uh, you know for the Road to Edition and the Control Center that uh, Tony Shivani does. Despite that, like, you know, if with that not involved, it was still a very good promo. It's like he explains his chair perver- pervertedness. It's like, who I am is easy to explain, but what I am is a bit more complex. And then he's like, you know, Punk has been seven years away from the wrestling business. And then uh, he's like, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. And I know exactly each, I know each and every way to, you know, exploit your weakness and how, how, how am I going to come out on top? And then he also disses Wardlow. He's like a two year, two year rookie with only one move to, you know, carry on. And then this match happens. But yes, man, like, Anytime Sean Spears, you know, even despite his old title and just take, which I thought he was like a, he was like my boy in NXT, you know, like the underrated slash undercard wrestler who you have a deep affection for. So 
Ty Dillinger was that case in NXT, but with Sean Spears, he gets to do his own shit, and you know he does. He's like so much better as Sean Spears. You know, he's like it comes off naturally of him. But yeah, man, I it's it always warms my heart whenever he gets some praise because you know ever since he's joined AEW, he hasn't really got, gotten all that much. It was just some weird gimmick or the other with the glove or the chair or uh, you know him like being a news reporter and gold dust pantsing him. Oh, sorry, what the fuck, Dustin Rose pantsing him. Why the fuck did I say gold dust here, man? But uh, let's talk about this match with Punk. This. Was a squash match, yep. Which was a little surprising. Like uh, we see Punk quickly hitting the GTS, go to sleep. One, two, three, and uh, Punk gets a quick victory. And I think uh, the people who were criticizing uh, Punk should, you know, quickly get rid of this quote unquote jobbers. Why is he having long matches with this underneath talent? I think. That's MJF. It's MJF's main criticism, but also what the the E drones have been saying. But there you go, man. Punk gets a quick victory. Oh, and, Punk is uh, Punk... Oh, Punk is burying in quote unquote AW original. How could he? Yeah, and one thing I forgot to mention: MJF MJF was on commentary, and he joined the commentary desk with this full confidence that. Spears is going to get the job done, but uh, accountability worthy this... of all time, and uh, yeah, he'll get the job done. And then Wardlow is just you know looking at him and he was smirking. So yeah, and uh, MJF decided to you know jump CM Punk, but uh, Punk had it scouted. He got a hold of the Burberry scarf, but uh, MJF was able to escape as Punk had a good little souvenir. For him. Yeah. And uh, if you notice the parallels between MJF and like MJF and Wardlow lately, you know, it's a bit stuck at whatever is happening in recent months, which is also going to contribute to the eventual split, you know. Like uh, Wardlow was a Sean Dean. Wardlow beat the shit out of him, you know, with the power bomb symphony. MJF versus Sean Dean. Sean Dean got the disqualification victory from with thanks to a CM Punk involvement. So Wardlow won MJF zero. The second case is Wardlow versus CM Punk. Wardlow beat the shit out of Punk, but he couldn't get the job done. Spears got squashed. So Wardlow two, MJF zero. So this is this is going to count on their thing. And I love how they're simultaneously building both stories like MJ versus Punk and MJ versus Bordo on the side, no matter. And MJF, like they've been doing that for months, but this is like far more uh, far more apparent in what they're trying to do in you know, like simultaneously building MJ versus Wardlow, but also MJ versus some other opponent that they're that they're facing. So Kudos to AW on that. Like when the split happens, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. You know, we all know that. But uh, how they're getting to it now, even more blatantly, it's so much better now. And couldn't be any more excited for it. Yeah, and it's getting Wardlow over. Yeah, it's his power bomb shtick is like, I think this is the best way that they've gotten him over. Despite you know, apart from the squash matches and him looking like how he is, like come on. But uh, as we move on, so we hear from Billy Gunn, who requested some TV time. So he got hold of a cameraman somewhere backstage as we see Christian Cage making making his way to the arena. And uh, he and Christian had some back and forth. So uh, Billy Gunn reminded us that his boys, uh, Colton yeah. and Austin, the Aust- the ass boys, the ass boys, are ranked number two in the tag team rankings. So Christian Cage we were, took a little cheap shot. He complimented that uh, that Colton and Austin are a pretty solid tag team. But uh, when the light shines the bright uh, brightest, the guns you know often you know don't get the job done. Something like that. So Gun took this personally as we had Austin and Colton attacking. Christian as the the heel team walk, walk off as we see a what, what do you, yeah basically they beat the shit out of Christian Cage that's what what I'm you know 
uh, wanted to mention here. So you could see a tag match, tag title match down the line. It's a random tag title match on TV and nothing much. Next week's rampage. Oh, it's set for next week's rampage. No, I'm just saying <laughs> because they haven't announced it for Dynamite yet, unless they decide to, you know. unless they announce it on social media or something but uh, it's if it's not announced for next week's dynamite it's certainly happening on next week's rampage but uh, it was it was weird the entire promo but whatever christian said was correct because if you remember billy gunn's push was murdered in 1999 thanks to the rock it's like when the light shined the brightest he couldn't get the job done like the king of the ring when was supposed to propel him to you know bigger things and even possibly being a wwe champion but the rock certain the rock most definitely murdered him on mike you know hi, yeah you you must have seen that hi my name is bob promo as like the he's talking to god and the god is like that's why i made you ugly and then after that like billy gun never recovered from it so good reference on christian for that but uh, i'm somewhat excited to see the match between the jurassic express and the as boys because i think that both austin and colton like austin especially is fucking hilarious he deserves the world man trust me it's, he's just so funny even like you know when you see him on the vlogs of sami and ethan and uh, if you remember when <laughs> austin gun uh, tells uh, darby you know he does the i like turtles bit which was funny and adavi lost a shit while he was talking like you know he just coughs he's like austin's going i like turtles and adavi he couldn't stop smiling after that so yeah i'm definitely looking forward to this match even though it's like it's a shame that they don't even uh, they never gave colton his much deserved due as like an undefeated wrestler he should have gotten a tag championship tag opportunity like way back but who oh, oh, am i to complain Yeah, at least he is finally ranked. Hmm. Yeah. Finally, like in a year and a half, probably this is the first time that he's being ranked in the top five or something. And what a way to get there! But as we move on, uh, and this is my the favorite part of Dynamite this week for me. We had the return, like the John Moxley return was also, you know. great but uh, this was a great wrestling moment for me on this week's uh, dynamite uh, we had the return of the tnt champion cody rhodes so he started off by you know uh, he got a ladder out and set it up in the ring as we come back from commercial we got uh, to the promo bit and i have to say this was a shoot promo if you will yep he is the you know he is finally airing his frustrations or you know in hindi we say puri bhadas nikal raha tha so this was that that instance and uh, in this promo he covered a lot i mean a lot like he started off by mentioning about this certain revolution and it started off by a guy who was sitting on the stage area and basically cut a pipe bomb promo reference you know made a reference to cm punk here but he also said that the difference between him and punk was that he punk was a guy who started a certain revolution but he cody rhodes was the one who actually delivered it while punk was gone missing for all these years he also said that punk's return was not just the comeback of the year but it was a comeback of the decade so as he moves along uh, with this shoot promo he talks about how the young bucks on a certain dynamite episode you know kicked off dynamite and they were mingling with developmental guys you know making Last a reference to red dragon yeah. saying that they were able to you know pass hip top sorry hip toss class in developmental something like, like that yep he did say that like he was referencing nxt and he is like uh, you know they almost started the wednesday nights war wednesday night wars again when they were interacting with red dragon who were in nxt like a few last year or few months ago and then he talks about the forbidden door said he was the guy who actually you know 
started something like that you know uh going going to other promotions like new japan ring of honor and uh, you know uh you know the rest of the story and he then talks about other guys in aw especially malakai black and his new partner brody king and he said this that naming calling you sir brody is actually a pretty big thing and you need a lot of balls for that something like that hmm it's going to be irrelevant in 8 years when a certain when a certain kid makes finally makes his debut so he is earmarking 2030 for uh, bro, uh, negative ones debut so he also talked about j lethal and said that uh, the what is that the lethal injection is the best cutter in the business so this is something that went through a lot of people said <laughs> it was getting full wrestling on that one and then yeah and when he mentioned about brody king you know he put him over as a big talent as this big guy who can do great uh, stuff in the ring and even mentioned that they, they don't want to you know have a name change and call him gunter mcgillicity or something crowd pop uh, Gun- gunter mcgilly butty which was like fucking hilarious man hands down could he <laughs> fuck and we also and this crowd was savage man they were chanting royal rumble oh <laughs> uh, yeah like knowing what the recent story is right and even that's what cody even alluded to in his promo he's yeah. a- he's not going anywhere come on guys no of course not man and then he referenced about you know uh, how aw uh, in his just a week of absence crowned a interim tnt champion so then he didn't mention it but you know uh, he was stating the obvious of how you know he brought a ladder in this match sorry in the, in the ring so he climbed the ladder and basically challenged sami guevara here for a ladder match to crown an undisputed tnt champion so this is happening at beach break and uh, yeah man this promo was great and i have to say cody rhodes is a interesting character on tv right now Yes, like uh, I think you did a better job of explaining to me because it's like while this was happening, I was just laughing along the way. But I was just wondering, like, why is he going off tangent and like talking about different things that aren't related to him at the very moment? The Forbidden Door was yes, the Lever Revolution was kind of, but everything else was like just off until he got to the part where he was trying to challenge Sami Guevara. and like he, he didn't even mention sami until the very end so i was like why why is he like what is he on but i think you've you've done a good job of explaining to me and then explaining to the viewers uh, the listeners of why you know why was he saying what he was saying hey he also mentioned why he doesn't want to turn heel he said he doesn't want yeah. to turn heel because of the people he talked about that story as well when like, well, you were the guys that were heel. cheering me yeah <laughs> he had a good point about that because that's what is the fear of you know uh have wanting guys like cena and reigns to turn heel too it's because we'll cheer for them if they turn heel which is like completely against the point of what a heel should be and i think bully ray must be enjoying himself when he, after you know cody finished the promo and it felt like a very unofficial heel turn for cody as well if you if you noticed but this was pretty integ- uh, sorry intriguing and uh, about the ladder match it should be good man it, it should, should be, be good. good it should be good and it should be cody winning because he has a big of fish to fry yeah that's the problem i want sami to retain you i even said this in their last match but the thing is cody looks like more of a important yes, exactly. character right now compared to sami exactly and uh, you don't know where it is going and at the same time what was the point of giving cody the title if you know if sami were to win it again and by the way are they doing the face of the revolution ladder match i mean they have mjf has mentioned so it better be happening because it will if not then he'll look like a chump wait in that case let's backtrack again let's backtrack then then okay. why are we having another ladder match you know 
in that small gap we have between now and revolution maybe it's the champion world here and the the other uh, what do you say Yeah, like the face of the revolution is also like it's mostly about the challengers a poss- uh, ranking a possible challenger for the title so maybe hey, I know, the best i'm trying to make sense out of it it would have been great if you instead had this match happening at revolution and just got rid of the face of the Le- revolution ladder match this ladder match would have made sense yep ha- yeah it would have been better and at the same time you know it would mean a lot more of being on a pay per view than on uh, on dynamite itself but there you go this is one of the marquee matches happening next week should be good and uh, on a side note i hope they have a different type of ladder match you know the shawn michaels and razor ramon style hmm now but it's sammy and he's going to like to he's been going to be a spot monkey cody is going to be it's going to be like i'm i'm not expecting anything different but it's going it's going to be great for sure for sure it's going to be great and uh, yeah man we'll talk about that when we talk about beach break next week but uh, as we move on uh what was the next thing yeah you want- have um sorry before we head on to the next you want to cover the sami promo now let's do it man let's do it i think he was doing the cue card bit here yeah same and i actually like the cue card bit it's, it's something actually, different you know? it's something different from what it usually is it reminds me of sign guy dudley in ecw he used to like when whenever, whenever joel gertner used to cut a promo he used to just give out clues at the back this is just that but you know at the very gen z level and he he's i mean of course sami is great and he is like you know vacationing in brazil at the moment and he was like saying okay there's going to be i wonder why of course you know why <laughs> his instagram is very like very uh, obvious why is it happening so yeah sami is moving very fast man yeah <laughs> he's moving faster than his 450 Six, 630 Oh, here it's a six thirty. Yes, this is a complete seven twenty. Good one. <laughs> But yeah, it, this I like the cue card bit with Sammy and uh, still man Cody is the bigger guy in this whole story. Whatever they want to, whatever whatever they are, you know, trying to tell us easily. So Sammy is like, there's going to be one champion. Uh, you took something away from me, but next week you're going to see a different Sammy Guevara. It's not the Sammy Guevara. You're not going to see the vlog star. You're not going to see the uh, a former TNT champion. I don't know what exactly he, like he said the other way, but uh, there's going to be a new Sammy Guevara, and he's going to beat the shit out of you, and that will be crowned the undisputed TNT champion. Undisputed TNT champion. I like that. Yep, should be good. Should be good. Yeah, bold prediction. Yeah, bold prediction. Sammy wins. I'm predicting Cody because of the obvious reasons why. It's a safe, but, uh, another... safe bet, rather. You know, let's just keep it to that. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, as we move on, uh, we had uh, Anna J and the TBS champion Jade Cargill. So we are getting the first defense for Jade here on this week's rampage. If I'm not wrong. Yep. So these two are back and forth uh, as uh, John Silver as actually the mouthpiece for uh, Anna J here, which was really good because Silver is pretty entertaining on the mic and just hyped up Anna J in this situation here. So Anna Hangi. What did they say again? Anna Hangi. Anna Hangi. So that is something that's going to be. You could hear some Anna Hangi chants on Rampage. Yep, I I'm waiting for like I hope it main events the Rampage to be you know for selfish reasons. So that because you want because you want to hear John Silver uh, mimic Mark Henry. Yes, exactly. Why? <laughs> like he's he's done it twice already, and it always looks hilarious. And this time also, it will it will be funny. If it happens. Okay, let's see how this first defense turns out for Jade. 
should be good i mean even the both are like you know incredibly inexperienced and this is not this is not me being a neck beard you know trying to shame them or something but it's 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 going to be a good match i'm pretty sure of that through crowd involvement hopefully 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 yeah. but let's talk about uh, a tag match here on dynamite this is the war city blondes versus malakai black and uh, new star new debutant here brody king kings of uh, and what is their what is the name of the tag team kings of the black throne they got a new king, team as well cut yeah kings of the black throne so this was a short match like the heel team here were dominating the varsity blondes and there was certain dissension between brian pillman and griff garrison we already talked about what could eventually happen with julia hart so everything led to you know uh, black and king dominating and got the win with that uh, dante's inferno way. what do they call it dante's inferno dante's inferno devil why did dante get involved in this situation i mean dante is the devil so i mean not dante, dante martin is in the devil it's a, it's a, a biblical reference but yeah there go uh, black and king get the victory and i have to say this team that they gave for this tag team is pretty sick the what the new team for team, black yeah, right. and king yes it's it's really good i thought they'll come on to amendra by again to what uh, alika has been using to enter but this is this is also good i need to make, need to check which one it is i don't think it, it, it... i did some research i yes. did some research the team that they came out to is actually uh, brody kings like it was actually performed by brody king himself because he has a rock band of his own wow wow man. that's that's really good i i wasn't aware of that yeah so i think it's called god's faith or god's kill it's pretty dark sounds like it with the gimmick and everything so yeah man and uh, like i said last week you they have given in malaka black new reason like he was getting pretty stale of you know being involved in the certain feuds after that cody thing was done he was cooling off now he's kind of heating up and this is pretty uh, the visual pairing of these two is really great it's as an obvious as well like you know we i had mentioned this before like brody king as a wrestler is basically malika black you know a bit like a double uh, i'm not i'm not trying to fat shame him okay like don't don't get me please don't light me on that but uh, like brody king is like a much bigger malakai black like a much bigger sized you know even like the offense or slash the the moves that that he has is pretty much what malakai does too so this perfect this pairing made perfect sense visually and also it makes sense on all the other fronts so count me in man and uh, who knows they, these two could be getting a tag title shot down the line and uh, speaking about a board prediction they could eventually get the titles of lucha sorry jurassic express they they very much could like you know it's only but it's only the first that we've seen of them so i don't want to get ahead of myself and uh, like it's it's hard to predict what they're going to do with the championship uh, sorry with the tag championship until revolution because there's still a good amount of time to, to figure out what are they eventually going to so post match we had malaka black cutting a promo he said members of the house of black rise and the people rose i loved it mm. man the, 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 everyone loves uh, yeah. the everyone loves malaka so and it's also getting help getting brody over who if he was hey, brody if that's if that's the case they should do it every week yeah they should they very much should but this post match promo was cut short as we see a you could say promo 
or video package for Park. Basically, the same thing that we saw last week. Uh, Park is blinded right now, and he wants "quote unquote" revenge. And we mentioned this last week. He could end up joining the House of Black. But it felt felt less of that and more of like you know Park going against. He was playing mind games with Malika. Because like ah. you know, with Park taking off that. Uh, what do you call this like park taking that off it kind of leaned back into park being in his natural habitat like if you remember when park there were like multiple parks cutting a promo in in one setting like you know this was when he returned during the pandemic and uh, there were like you know more instances where he um, what, what was i saying like he cuts these promos backstage where i don't know sits in an unnamed location in his ring gear and stuff so this this leaned more into that and it was just park playing mind games with malakai it could happen that he could join the house of black but i think you know blood is thicker than devil maybe in this in this case because you know pa- malakai and uh, brody they're targeting the lucha brothers and park is someone who's near and dear to them so i don't think it's going to happen personally but i am interested in this whole thing what park and malika black do next me too me too yeah and we could they could go back to you know uh, the thing with penta l0 m because malika black attacked him also last week yes and now with even the ray phoenix out injured it only makes sense if park slots in that role Hey, have you heard about this update on Ray Phoenix that he could eventually come back even sooner? I did not. Which uh, weirdly, I think did we discuss that when uh, you know, like his uh, injury? It was like you know, quote unquote, thankfully a dislocation less than you know something else that could have happened, something worse. Which we thought we were kind of happy that you know it wasn't anything worse than that. but uh, you know hoping he comes back stronger but again if this if he can come sooner than expected then i'm not sure i hope if he's if he's good with it so I, so will i be but as we move on there is yet another return uh, to aw this is jake the snake roberts he has rejoined with lance archer uh, there was dan lambert as well they are talking about uh, uh, hangman adam page and uh, this was a great transition no before this transition to the lance archer and franky kazarian match we hear from trent and rocky romero basically brandon cutler was you know he set up his camera for a promo for the elite but the elite were absent at this moment so trent and uh, rocky romero took this time and you know, they talked about you know the things going on with the elite and the best friends so they talk about you know their history with the young bucks especially you know they have faced multiple times in new japan and even beaten them for uh, the iwgb junior tag team titles at one point so they want to challenge young bucks for a match on the uh, the upcoming edition of ramp page and uh, should be good man and also aw went as far as you know showing clips of uh, these two in several matches they had in new japan so which i hope you hey, you didn't get uh, dmc aid for yeah tv uh, what's the network there on new japan in japan access tv no new japan hey, in japan is asahi asahi my bad my bad your tv si was you know shaking in the grip yes i mean you know the story right uh, the where uh, new japan or tv si they dmc at fucking dick togo on twitter uh like can you please elaborate with so dick togo posted a clip from one of his new japan matches or was it a promo i'm not sure and then new japan put a copyright ban on him one on one of their employees like what the actual fuck bro this whole situation with new japan copyrighting stuff is 
insane. I came across Hiromu Takahashi's vlog on his YouTube, and this guy is posting YouTube clips from the New Japan, you know, or New Japan World thing. Yeah, I mean, maybe they were he would have gotten some permission or something, but but poor poor Dick Togo. So yeah, he deserves it though. That guy deserves it. Yes, for being a spoiler and the House of Torture guy, yes. But I mean, how can you not love Dick Togo for the other, for other reasons? Uh, the GIF. Yeah, the GIF is to... okay, but uh, fuck House of Torture, fuck yeah. even. Fuck Dick Togo. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, coming back to this uh, promo that uh, Rapongi Vice cut. So it's like a one night reunion of Rapongi Vice. They're going to enter to that theme most certainly because Rocky Romero has in the past. I'm hyped for that, and uh, also you know even you know when they uh, when they finished the promo, they were just being nice to Brandon, and Brandon was like, "Oh, thank you guys." It was like a bit a bit touching moment because like the elite keeps torturing him. and uh, like you know like they they even aired a promo on bt this was like uh, brandon is like he's just airing his grievances to nakazawa and he's like no oh, my name is not landon i need to stand up to them and then kaler ali just jumps in and then you know he just talks shit talks shit to brandon and brandon couldn't stand up to stand up for himself and then nakazawa calls him a little bitch so this was a little touching moment where brandon was feeling feeling happy that people were actually nice to him instead of the usual but uh, this should be a really good match and oh. by the way this is a live rampage yes this is a live rampage should but be as yeah as we move on we just mentioned about uh, jake roberts coming back you know uh, aligning himself with lance archer so archer was in a match against frankie kazarian This was a squash match, but man, this went for a while. This took me out of the show, to be completely honest with you. Thought this was like this was like the okay. This is mean, but uh, this was the in comparison and relatively, this was the worst part of the show for me because this the the crowd was dead for it. One, these guys just went overboard, and I understand that Frankie is a very established, you know, the veteran who is. Who's that? Like you know, who who has a wrestling pedigree of his own? But again, they should have shortened the match a lot more. And when it went to the ad break itself, it was like this. That's when they stopped trying, and they were just going through the motions. But man, is it just me or does Lance Archer actually look in rough shape physically? You mean bad shape? Like what we were, what we didn't notice of Moxley because we were so excited to see him before. We might. Notice that with Archer now. Archer has gotten rid of the murder rock. Yeah, he has. Like his hair has grown now from the places where he used to shave. Yeah, it looks weird. Yeah, it, it looks really weird. But uh, he's going he, back to the American Psycho. The American Psycho. Oh yes, the American Psycho or uh, the time when he was tramp stamp height. That was in TNA, right? Yep, like the Rock and Rave infection with uh, Jimmy Rave and Christy Hemi. He might just go to that. I don't know. That's that's a regression in my eyes. Uh, but uh, the one thing you just mentioned when they went to commercial break, like this match went for a uh, while, should have ended in just five minutes. But this there was one favorite spot when Lance Archer was beating Kazarian outside. uh he caught a young a girl who was sitting ringside and he was just uh trying to you know scare her bully her and the crowd noticed it and the boo the shit out of archer like, i loved it the shit piece of shit <laughs> yeah and i did it uh more than once and this reminded me of him doing the same thing when he was in new japan He used to scare the shit out of little kids in those New Japan shows. Yeah, and he used to beat up young lions to fall in the lead of Minoru Suzuki. Okay, the, the, I I I think I could dig this type of lions archer in AEW as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whenever there's he catches a young fan, he should go after him. 
<laughs> i hope the the kid was like you know later on he made up with that kid uh, you know after the show and just told her i'm sorry i was just playing a playing a role like you know sometimes like if this was the 90s he would have been crucified then and there itself but uh, like, uh, archer like, would eventually yeah archer would eventually get the win hit the black out and a little post match thing here as he wanted to send a message to the champ but uh, as you know uh, i think he was about to hit a black out on the steel chair or something like that but hangman adam page finally shows up slap the shit out of archer these two had a big horse fight like brawl uh, at one point page was going for the buck shot uh, got caught by archer uh, was going for a choke slam i think but uh, page uh, was able to escape and tossed out archer to the outside as dan lambert held back archer at this moment so we'll have to wait and see when this world title match eventually happens i don't think it's happening at revolution No, 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 no. It's a, it's a placeholder feud until uh, probably Adam Cole joins the fray and challenges Hangman for the championship. But uh, that being said, it's weird to see Dan Lambert and Lance Archer being a thing because if you remember the first appearance of Dan Lambert was when Lance Archer black gave him a blackout and that was the first show with crowds that they did, which was you know road racer. So it's weird. to see it being a thing but i don't know i don't know where that is going and it's it certainly confuses me but also you know we keep mentioning that you know lance archer is the big show of aw like he just turns heel then he turns face then he turns heel then he turns face and then yeah we we don't know what's what's going to happen with him yeah at least he works better as a heel at this moment at this moment yes but i can i kind of miss face lance archer but again that also i'm not i'm not going to like you know bring that up now uh my turn yeah and at least they have mentioned the fact that uh, at one point archer did you know uh, was beating the hell out of Lam- lambert now he has land himself with that guy so if they even mentioned is there money involved what's going on and then uh, lambert was like you don't need to know what my relationship with archer is then he continues with the promo yeah it's, it's confusing on all parts but uh, this world title match you can do it even on a rampage if you want to pop a rating <laughs> yes uh, but i don't think they're going to it's going uh, this match isn't going to be pre taped or something uh this week was a great opportunity to do that Yeah, but again, I don't know how are they going to you know get on the ranking system for that, or maybe Hangman just goes to Tony and says like I want to I want to face Archer despite the rankings because fuck that. Yeah, that's the only way they can do this match at this moment. They have done those type of matches in the past, like they haven't followed Butcher. the rankings that strictly. Butcher is one that I can recall, and uh, uh, we had Kingston at one point. Yeah, even Eddie Kingston. When Arch, ironically, it was Archer who had caught COVID, and uh, Eddie Kingston was his replacement. So we could see the same situation happening with Archer and Page, and uh, should be a good match, man. No, it will most certainly be. Like Archer is going to do his Archer stuff. Hangman's going to do some cowboy shit, and there you go. We, we, this is this match is going to be hard hitting. One thing's for sure. Yeah, I think Archer, after he almost killed himself with that moon salt or whatever he does, oh, in on like a last ride or something, I think he's really holding back on that aerial maneuvers. Yeah, he hasn't been. He was mostly like this power-based offense that he was hitting, the heli coaster, and then you know the blackout. He wasn't relying, but again, like you know those high flying maneuvers also. Um, Like crowd poppers, and he's a heel right now, so he wouldn't do that for the heat. Which, yeah, which makes sense. It does, it does. But as we move on, uh, we hear from Team Taz, Ricky Starks, and uh, Paras Ops. They are talking about Dante. He's uh, who has become kind of a baby brother. You know, he's having a baby brother complex here in AEW. Which is like funny. he finds, yeah, he finds a new friend every week now at this point. Everybody so right now, 
yeah right now uh, dante has aligned himself back with matt sidel and uh, lee moriarty where's leo rush so that's that's what i was uh, getting to where the fuck is leo rush they and the worst part is they didn't even mention him you know it's like after weeks of you and uh, sidel having differences you have finally aligned i'm like dude he was with leo rush now where the fuck is he like I remember, like Leo Rush had an interview with uh, Denise Salcido. Big shouts out, by the way. She like he had mentioned that he was doing promotion. He was doing work with other promotions. Like he was involved with New Japan and uh, another another promotion that I don't recall at the moment. And all of these, no, not PWG. Someone else. And. Uh, No, I guess it's Terminus. I'm not sure. Like he had a picture with someone on uh, on a New Japan show, some you know US talent, and also he was like uh, they were they were working with him on some uh, you know the album that AEW is the the album that AEW is releasing with all these you know POC superstars, POC wrestlers, of you know telling their story, and so like. it's weird you know knowing what happened and where we are right now after it happened so he's kind of become persona non grata and i mean that for the worst reasons i hope i hope everything is fine with him in aw it's just the timing of it is a little off you know what i'm saying like does he have heat with tony khan i hope not because he even said that you know tony and uh, mega the pr lady for ew they have cleared the air and like you know they are still they are finally on the same page but i don't know like the, like i said the timing is still very off of of uh, like you know what happened and then after he disappeared like he disappeared off from ew tv and there's no yeah. there's, there's no there's not a single mention of him either after like you know um him battling team taz with alongside dante and then now dante coming to the aid of matt sidal and lee moriarty and then now lee moriarty is like until your brother returns we will always be your brothers and then we cut to the promo of team taz where uh, you know there's like the bb brother complex line which is funny and then there was something that hob said okay he teased it saying you need to look your front you need you need to look at you need someone to look for your front your back and your sides because there is a surprise coming so bold prediction would be i think either one of jay lethal or lee moriarty joining team taz right now it can't be jay lethal because he is actually involved in a small program with ricky stocks yes but you never know maybe you know they just decide nah fuck it fuck dante and they just try to beat the shit out of him or it could even be darius for what we know ah oh, that could be a thing but you are breaking up top flat in that situation yeah and i don't want that unfortunately because you know it's like dante you know there is a reason why they can do it because you know dante has been becoming successful on his own like as a solo wrestler while darius has been gone and everybody has forgotten darius they don't even know who darius is unfortunately so it's like dante has been getting all the universal acclaim it's a shame that you know people forgot darius so that will be an interesting spin on things but i don't know i'm not ready to see top line break up but um as we move on we had a backstage thing with uh, chris tatlander and velvet velvet sky why was i saying velvet sky it's red are you are you alex from queen of the ring who's alex like the have you heard of queen of the ring right like it's a youtube channel like there's a reviewer slash wrestling critic named alex i think i know who queen of the ring is yes so she did the very same mistake by calling red velvet velvet sky Okay, let the pigeons loose. Yeah, le- so breathe with the heat. So, ah, uh, it was Red Velvet and Chris Tatlander. Ah, uh, they're being interviewed, and uh, immediately they are interrupted by Leila Hirsch. So Leila Hirsch talks about what happened. I think it was last week on Rampage, yeah, where they lost the trios match. So Leila is mad that Tatlander cost them. the victory and, and basically cost him thousands of dollars 
Yeah. Was what Leila Hirsch was saying. Yeah, it's it's a trope, right? In combat sports, where you know there's something called the winner's purse, where the winner gets more money than the loser for for that particular match. At least Leila Hirsch has a reason to you know be mad. Yes, and like you know, getting mad at your partner for costing them money was like a good is like an interesting spin. I think Sean Ross Sapp mentioned that on his Twitter, which was which I thought was like pretty funny, and then. you know like one of the other old tropes in wrestling is like uh, the manager's license it's like people you know these managers who appear inside so they have like a particular license i think the last person i saw who you know recalled that trope was sami zayn on wwe tv where he was managing mojo rawley on raw and shinsuke nakamura on smackdown okay so leila harsh like uh, she still blaming uh, statlander for this loss uh red velvet you know jumped in tried to be the peacemaker but at the end leila harsh would beat the shit up shit out of both velvet and statlander locked in a sick looking armbar on statlander as you know officials came coming. to separate uh, separate the two so leila harsh officially heel now and i say she could make a good member for team tess I've been wanting that for such a long time i think ever since i started reviewing dynamite this is what like Like there was some instances where Taz was actively scouting her on uh, Dark or Elevation, but it could happen sooner or later, and should happen soon. <laughs> and she would she would make a great member for Team Taz, of course, because of her legit fighting style. Or maybe you know with Brian Danielson, uh, he want he had mentioned in an interview that he wanted to start a stable with all these you know like a, something of a catch point slash diamond mine in NXT. So where he's like having all these catch wrestlers. So Daniel Garcia was one. Leila Hirsch could be one of that, if that happens. Right. Get Red Dragons as well. Yes, 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 please. It kind of makes sense. It makes so much sense. So uh, as we move on, uh, Serena Deeb was in action. The professor Serena Deeb, PhD. She was pay. Uh, she was facing Sky Blue. and uh, this was yet another quick victory for serena debier as she hit the detox sorry the deep tox and the serenity lock and got a submission victory so they are doing something with serena deeb man i feel she is going to face tai conti when she is back from brazil mm, at this point that's the story so hikaru shida Has gone back to Japan. Yeah, she is so, doing project for AW over there. And this match came about because Sky Blue and Ty Conti and Anna J, you know, came out to help Shida in that beat down. Yep, <laughs> it was weird, and I think the disparity made for a good, interesting match because you know Serena is like the seventeen-year veteran, Sky Blue is like. a rookie so this was an interesting match up in that sense but it made sense for it to be a squash as well because serena is far more experienced and she just you know wrecked havoc of sky blue and yeah it was it was a good match for what it was like and it serena a- deep was a sorry is a washington native yes i got to know that on dark or something no 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 not dark sorry the road to but she was built from virginia uh, during the announcement hmm weird but as but uh, anything else you want to point out as we move on uh there was a promo from ethan page uh challenging moxley and then dan lambert it's scorpio sky there was no mention of scorpio sky at all like you know yeah, i thought like maybe you know the the funny part is that okay shout out to v1 from osw on twitter he pointed out that the last time he wrestled a singles match was in may 2021 and then that's what scorpio sky is claiming that he's been undefeated in singles matches because he hasn't wrestled at all and oh that's the reason he's unde- undefeated yeah that's the reason he's undefeated and before that like the last sing- uh he's like he's been undefeated overall was like i think he had some match or something i don't remember But he's yeah. wrestled dark and elevation at that point, right? 
yeah yeah he's been wrestling dark and elevation regularly so maybe that could be the reason but the last match he had on dynamite was in may 2021 this was i think before the uh, before the match with darby and sting on double or nothing mm i don't know man when are we, when are we going to see that pay off for scorpio sky will he get uh-huh. the tnt championship will he at least get a tnt title match he better get a tnt title match but man i'm not ready for boring as scorpio sky to be champion trust me but uh, the main story is uh, moxley's uh, first match back is against ethan page and uh, should be good oh it's going to be great i'm very sure of that one i re- like we we wax lyrical about okay i'm exaggerating but we wax lyrical about how great ethan page is so this should be great as well and besides that uh, there is there was another promo with hfo and andrade el idolo so now hfo and uh, Andrade's operations have merged, so now it's AHF where Matt Hardy is the CEO and Andrade is the Presidente, and then the it's like everyone is uh, like now a part of it, which you could see you could notice that uh, Matt Hardy mentioned a uh, private party, but he did not mention Butcher and the Blade, and they looked displeased while this merger was happening, and at the same time, uh, like the next Andrade's next target is that Liru Kid who works for Mister Stink. so that's it's happening so they are trying to recruit darby allen yeah <laughs> if you if you remember that promo that andrade cut on uh, rampage is like uh, mr stink lay me your price and we'll uh, recruit darby is like how you know no he's like uh, he's targeting that little kid who works for sting which is darby and then uh, tony shawani is like he darby does not work for sting and then andrade is like how you know and then he's like yeah i certainly know i know them pretty close and andrade is hilarious okay so we discussed this in the past right of how great andrade is as a as a promo for all the right reasons like is whatever he's saying is hilarious and this is not because that english is his second language english isn't his first language it's because the things that he's saying are hilarious as it is he's basically giving you great meme material exactly and like someone made a compilation on twitter he's like you know that match something promo and then he shits on cody statu and uh, like el make him his little bitch and then this mr stink promo stink mind you not not sting g it's stink with a k mr stink stink mr stink but but you know what stinks this whole hfo thing and him them calling themselves now a hfo which is not good for andrade and which is not good for the hfo members as well in a way you know it's you have butcher and blade as mercenaries you can count on them as such one second you know andrade has something to invest like you know he has his quote unquote guys that he can pay off regularly to be the shit out of people and three that uh, it's going to break up soon because they wouldn't do that otherwise with you know the potential arrival of jeff hardy looming and uh, you know private party are waiting to break on their own as you know a good tag team so it's going to no, man. it's going to happen soon which i'm confident about unless the aw just takes the usual route of like you know we getting past the climax stage and then finally delivering it to a lesser response you know So I I have a feeling it's happening because Jeff Hardy can arrive in AEW in potentially another couple of months and uh, Matt Hardy is going to be so Matt Hardy is going to break up from private party from uh, HFO and like you know these guys are, everyone's going to go their separate ways. We'll have to wait and see but uh, want to do a quick uh, preview for Rampage. Yes so we have this match uh, that's John Moxley and Ethan Page that's one match that is announced. then there is uh, roppongi vice versus the young bucks that's another match announced then another match that we discussed was jet kagel and anajay for the tbs championship that's one and then there is another match that was announced while they were previewing rampage which was secret weapon hook the crook versus serpentico so yeah that's your boy serpentico 
Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I actually forgot about that because yeah, I'm more of a Luther guy, but yeah, I like Serpentico too. This is like my boy. Yeah. And this is uh, the live TV debut match for Hook. Yes. It's going to be it's just interesting. Yeah, it's going to be just as good. Don't worry. Yes. No, the boy. Yeah, this rampage looks pretty entertaining, man. The card. Yes, and somehow I don't know for some reason Rampage has been a show to watch out for in the past two two three weeks as well, and also you know it's it's only one hour so it it helps you get past it pretty easily. And uh, I hope AEW gets uh, motivated every time they get a chance to air li- uh, Rampage live, or just a Rampage in particular because like the last few weeks Rampage has been great to watch. um uh, it had some rampageish moments but uh, i can agree on that yes and uh, last week's main event i thought was great except for the finish which has unfortunately been the story of jungle boy and uh, the jurassic express's title reign so far ah uh, in that case uh, i hope they don't go the lucha bros route with them no 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 like the finisher the finisher was botched is what it was i ac- actually don't remember what happened Yeah, I mean the Jurassic Express. You use the finisher on Alex Reynolds and badly hit it, and then they picked up the victory from there. Ah, see, I see. But uh, shall we get to the main event? Yes, we shall. Yes, we shall. Let's go. It is the acclaimed facing Sting and Darby Allen. But before that, we had a little video package. This is basically a parody video for what Sting and Darby Allen have done in the past. So it yeah. was uh, Anthony Bowens. This guy had a great Tarby uh, Allen like outfit. Killed, killed it basically. Mm. And we had someone dressed in Sting. He was riding a old car. So what happened was, so this uh, fake Sting ran was about to you know run over uh, Anthony Bowens here. Bowens saw this coming and said, "It's Sting," and ran Bowens over. So this fake thing uh, got out of the car and was checking on Bones, but out comes Max Caster. He hit uh, this fake thing with something and laid him out. And uh, I think Caster shouted, "It's show time!" Yeah, it's show time. And then he smiles, and then it fades to black. Then uh, leads to the acclaimed acclaimed entrance. So uh, the acclaim come out to the entrance and uh, do the rap bit, and I think this was uh, a better rap that I heard recently from Caster. Yes. So he talks yeah. about Gory, uh, Allen and Sting. Yeah, he talks about Allen and Sting going through a goth phase, and said uh, that they are going to embarrass both of them, and in like a way, Starcade, like Starcade ninety seven. Is it that where Sting won the world title, right? Yes, but it happened in like such dubious fashion because, like, if you remember, Hogan went on went for business for himself, where you know he just uh, beat up Sting for the majority of the match, and then, uh, like, for the pinfall, Nick Patrick did a clean, did a normal cover. Like, it was supposed to be a fast count, but uh, Nick Patrick did like a normal. Uh, pinfall so it was a clean victory for hulk hogan essentially but then bret hart comes out and then he smacks the referee and then he calls calls for the match again and then sting picks up the victory from a quote and quote screw job finish so that was that was like it was supposed to be the biggest like uh, the piece de resistance of wcw at that point but it happened in such messy fashion and it's more remembered for the controversy so that was what it was mm that's the case then pretty debusy debut like yeah it was very wcw like and also um also the gory self mutilation line by from max caster which was obviously funny because of what we know now and uh... Yeah, everyone loves the Acclaim man for that reason alone. Yep, they've really turned a corner, like the Acclaim, especially Max Caster, right? From like how much controversy he had gotten last year, mid in the middle of last year, for his rap on Julia Hart, and then he was suspended for a month. 
and whenever they show up on tv and have something important they really shine yeah i think the turning part was when you know he did the father in law line to danielson before her uh, full gear which is also dope oh yeah <laughs> fucking fantastic but, but yeah. quickly let's talk about this match uh, what happened was darby allen was actually taken out of this match as he as a chair was wrapped around his neck and uh, the acclaimed sent him uh, into the ring post looked brutal so he was carried to the back and the way he did the spot actually looked like darby killed himself mm-hmm. that's the case with every darby allen match so uh, we got a two on one handicap match here so sting i think did a really decent job you know uh, carrying himself in this match and you know fighting the acclaimed acclaimed members uh, alone but uh, the number games was too much for sting so at one point uh, i think they were about to do some kind of spot where we see the steel steps being introduced so caster was uh, on top of this uh, set steel step and we are going for something i don't know but all of a sudden darby allen comes back from the stage area from the tunnel way and just clears caster of uh, the steel step looked insane mm, yeah he jumped from the stage mind you on to max caster was standing on the ring steps he got a lot of distance on that and from there uh, the baby faces that is allen and sting were in control so another big spot came where sting was on the stage area was going for something it took a while uh, so what happened was caster was laying on the ringside table so sting decided to you not know, take a sprint and basically do a frog splash or a dive on caster through a table looked insane and but sting uh, took most of coming... the ball on that one though yeah this is coming from a guy who's 60 plus right yeah. now it was it was it was great in that sense but yeah it, it looked a little shaky but again staying doing such things at like 63 64 years of age is he might be the best wrestler ever who's 60 plus like the best 60 plus wrestler ever right now yes any all time uh, what do you think about terry funk okay i forgot about that continue <laughs> i think there are a lot of guys who are wrestled 60 plus i think at one point demolition were wrestling i think recently yep i think they uh, were 80 yes uh i think one ganya also wrestled in his 70s and in the uh, uh didn't tasumi fujinami show up in the tokyo dome this year did yeah i i am not sure about that wait You, he was in that uh, honor rumble or uh, the rumble thing that didn't he? oh yes you are right right uh, but anyways anyways yeah. coming back to sting doing crazy stuff still even uh, in this age so from there uh, darby allen i think he was working on uh, bowens it is uh, the pop up stunner and then hit the coffin drop got the big win and there you go man the baby faces stand stall and uh, yeah that was dynamite yep it was like a really fun show and this match was also fun in the most parts you know like it was like a good a crowd service main event type where uh, you know it was just what not to expect from you know what they were doing but again like of course um uh, like the main story was about how sting was persevering through both guys and after you know after the show ran off the air uh, they were doing a sting appreciation night and this was also sting's first match on tbs after in 22 years almost like 21 and a half years or whatever yeah and he was so shook that he called 2022 2000 yes like tony shavani tony shavani has like you know in disbelief is like oh fuck it's 21 years it's the, that it's been that long since they faced and then like the casting was persevering and then darby runs to rescue sting from the acclaim and the acclaim i think this is the best that they've looked in such a long time don't you think 
they have that's that uh, that's what we were covering before we started reviewing this match and uh, i hope we get to see a lot of acclaim and this recent shows but about sting and darby allen with uh, a little quick note here i think uh, they really putting in a lot of effort to you know get these guys for it in the tag title scene which yeah. i wouldn't mind but imagine if these guys you know get paired up with uh, house of black as in a feud i'm saying mm, yes but i think this is going to be more interesting if darby and uh, sting face jurassic express for the tag titles at uh, at revolution because you know they they might very well be you know coming into the top 5 picture but before that i think they're going to take care of uh, the khfo before they get to the tag title scene and uh, you know there is a bit of time till revolution so i think they're going to wrap up that feud before they go ahead for the tag titles and speaking about wrap up i think it's time to wrap up this review with one good one and before we leave that was a good transition right yeah it was it was but before we leave where can you guys find me So you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at red underscore aman. That's about it. And uh, you can find me on uh, wait. You can find me. You can find Slam Up Wrestling on Twitter at Slam Up W Instagram at Slam Hub Wrestling. You can catch this review on Anchor and Spotify as well. This was the AW Dynamite review, and I'll see you guys next time. Adios.